In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the terrain transformer. So Dungeon Architect comes with the ability to also transform your terrains. So here's a nice level that I've created using uh, assets from 3D Foods Tyler Dungeon Sewer Kit. And uh, I, I see that there's a lot of empty space here and I'd like to fill the space up. So one easy way of doing that is by using a terrain. So we're going to drop in a terrain and let Dungeon Architect modify the terrain around the layout of this dungeon. So the terrain transformer doesn't just modify the height of the terrain, it also paints it for you and we'll see how. So to start with, uh, first, first you need to uh, drop in the terrain modify script onto the dungeon object. So navigate to Dungeon Architect, scripts, dungeon, landscape and here you would find a script named landscape transformer landscape transformer grid. So select the, the dungeon game object and drop in this script onto the game object. So here you see that it expects a reference to the terrain that it needs to modify. So let's create a terrain. And let's center our terrain. So you know, specify minus 250. Sorry, this is scale. Okay, and also let's bring this down a bit. Now let's select our dungeon object and add a reference to the terrain. And now we need to specify the ground height level. This is the ground level of the normal, this is like the normal ground level that you'd like to have. So I'm gonna set this to something like minus seven. So anywhere where you don't have a layout, it will be minus seven and wherever there's a layout, it would be raised up to be, to match with the layout of the dungeon. So now when I, before I build, I need to specify the room elevation curve as well. So this curves specifies how smooth your transition goes from this curve down to the ground level, from, from the corridors down to the ground level, from the room down to the ground level. So I'm gonna select this and choose one of the presets. I'll go with this. I'll also specify the same preset for this. And when I build it, you see that it has created a nice, uh, uh, let me raise the ground level up a bit. So you see it has modified the height of the terrain. Uh, now, we don't want the terrain to be so high. Uh, the, Wherever you have a la the, la the layout of the dungeon, it raises the terrain and matches it with the layout. But sometimes you might want it to go down a bit, not just touch the, uh, the layout. So in that case, you have the layout level offset. So if I bring this, if I want to bring this down by minus two, then it would raise it up, but only till, till this height minus two. And that's what this offset is about. Uh, let's bring the, let's bring this down a bit more. So let's, the ground level. Okay, so this is looking good. Now we also have the ability to paint the, trans, the terrain. So to do that, you need to specify the textures. So I'm going to create a new, uh, add an entry to this array. And here you, you choose what type of a texture it is. So let's start with the fill texture. So the fill texture fills the entire uh, fills the entire terrain with this texture. So I'm going to specify one. Let's choose this. And also specify the normal map. And when I build, see it's, uh, it has nicely filled my entire terrain with this texture. So you can also uh, specify the size that you would like to have. So if you want, you can adjust the scaling of this. So if I turn this down to 10, to 10. So it would take just 10 units per, per tile. So it will be a little more condensed. Uh, you have more options if you would like to add a different, uh, different texture wherever there's a cliff, wheres, wherever there is a steep curve. You could do that, so let's add another texture. I'm gonna specify two and change this to cliff. And I have, uh, let's assign this texture. Oh, 
let's assign this texture and also add in a normal map and watch what happens when I build you see when I build this as long as there is this uh, when we have a steep curve we have uh, this texture is applied on on top of that let's go back to the let's add some fog as well so looks As you can see, it's looking much, much better than before. I'll show you another example. Let me save this. Now here's another example where the terrain is dynamically modified. So uh, you see that it has painted the, the terrains, cliff, and it, there's one more way of, you, you can also paint the internals with another texture. So I've painted it with a sand texture to show that it's been, uh, the grass has been eroded and we have a different sand texture. And there's also some smoothing here. So you don't have a, an exact straight line. It's like a not nice, transition on this texture. So everything in this level is procedural. The, the placing of the objects was procedural and the landscape was also dynamically modified. So here I'll give you an example. So I'm just gonna zoom out a bit and select the dungeon object and I'm going to go to the configuration and change the, the seed. So seed is, uh, seed. if you change the seed value, it would completely change the layout. Uh, but the rules to define the layout would remain the same, but the layout would be different. So you get a completely different layout with a modified landscape. So the landscape was modified and painted. So let's get another seed. So the one extra texture that I have added in this uh, landscape transformer is the corridor texture. So this corridor texture is this brown texture that I have, which uh, which is smoothly added to the to the internals of the uh, of the pathway. So that is defined by these values: the road blur distance and the uh, corridor blur threshold. So if modifying these values will modify how how thin or thick you would like this pathway to be. There's also a smoothing distance. Uh, the smoothing distance is how smooth do you want this cliff to be starting from here to here so that the end target is the ground level here and the corridor is this level. So how smooth do you want this transition to be? And I have specified it to be six units. If you reduce this value, say if I move this to two, and rebuild, then the smoothing happens within just two units, right? So it's a, you get a much more steeper curve along the along the corridor. So you have these uh, values to play with. 